OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So uh, we are the DLAC team from San Juan Adult Education and we are in San Juan Unified School District. Um, and our team members, Blair Roy is our coach, Marisol Richmond, she's an ESL teacher. Um, Jody Barker is our, an ESL teacher. Uh, Linda Lehman, an ESL, ESL teacher, and I'm Angela Rodriguez, I'm the vice principal. So we're going to start with the, um, just a couple of statistics on our school just to give kind of a, um, an overview of who we are. So we are in San Juan Unified School District, which is located in Sacramento County. Um, San Juan serves um, about 40,000 students a year, over 60 um, four schools. Um, we um, serve the communities of Carmichael, Sturgis Heights, Fair Oaks, Orangeville, and Arden Arcade. So we're a pretty widespread district. We have two adult ed campuses. Um, one is at Sunrise Tech Center. Um, and on our east end of our um, district. And then we also have um, Creekside Adult Center, which is on um, the west end of our district. Um, we also serve um, four off-sites with ESL classes across our district. Um, we serve over 5,000 students last year and our program areas are ESL, high school um, equivalency, high school diploma, ABE, CTE, and community education. And our biggest program area is our ESL program. Um, and the top two native languages spoken by our ESL students are Farsi and Spanish. So our why. Um, when we started this program, um, the DLAC program, we uh, looked at our data and one of the pieces that we looked at was the um, teacher skills assessment from our technology and distance learning plan. And we saw some gaps um, in teacher um, tech skills and their comfortable, um, how comfortable they were with using technology in the classroom. And for example, 35% of our teachers were comfortable um, with tech-based classroom projects. 40% of our teachers were comfortable supporting mm -hmm. students online learning and 65% were um, current, stayed current with new technologies. And we saw that this is um, a potential gap and a potential um, area for inequity with our students. So we really um, decided that supporting our teachers and um, providing more professional development so they can feel comfortable using technology in the classroom is where we needed to focus. So our DLAP project uh, was kind of in two parts. So the first part was teacher tech training. The, our tech training goals evolved over time. At first, we wanted to help teachers update their basic tech skills. And then we started to train teachers to help them implement technology in their, into their classroom. This turned into monthly professional development we call Teacher Tech Fridays. Training topics include G Suite for Education, Quizlet, Kahoot, Bitly, ASAP Data Management, plus more classroom tech ideas as we learned more. So the second part of their DLAC project was to create a repository of technology resources that houses lessons that teachers can refer to at their convenience. So we started a teacher website. This houses lessons, tutorials, and websites to give teachers easy access to these uh, topics. The, then we started a teacher blog that where teachers, we asked teachers to share and comment on their best practices as they used technology that they were learning. Our DLAC project changed after the school closures. So under COVID-19, part three was born. Because the DLAC team was already in place, we became the tech support as teachers worked to transition to 100% distance learning. The teacher blog became a central location to post updated information and communication. Teachers were trained to schedule 
open and run Zoom classes. Teachers learn to use communication apps such as WhatsApp and Remind. They use these to contact and communicate with their students. Also, the ESL staff have been actively attending many OTAN facilitated online trainings. The DLAC team continues to support our teachers in groups, training via Zoom, and one-on-one -on -one training as needed. Here's the before and after COVID-19 teacher tech training. So what a difference a year has made. So um, spring uh, 2019, this is a teacher tech training, a teacher tech Friday in a computer room at our one of our schools. And then here's just last week, spring 2020, a Zoom training class. So what a difference a year makes. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the time over to Marisol Richmond. Hello everybody. And so now we'd like to reflect back on our first year of DLAC training. The technology, distance learning symposiums, and the online sessions with Destiny Simpson in the Ideal Consortium all were essential to launch our distance learning program. From a DVD paper checkout system to a complete 100% online system. We started off with Canvas, the community college program our upper level students would transition to in the region's Los Rios community colleges. They use this program. But as we continue to refine our program, we will look to address each student group level. And so far, the biggest challenge has been the literacy and low level ESL classes. Teachers have been using multiple online platforms and methods to try and teach them. WhatsApp, Zoom were the most common. So in year two, we refined our program even further. With the training in DL102 course and Destiny Simpson once again, we created a rubric to analyze and vet new additions. This is a tool we'll use to train our staff in considering new web resources and online programs moving forward. And at this point in our project, we credit Dr. Porter's wise coaching and his Clifton's strengths trainings, which gave us the confidence to lean on each other's strengths for solutions to the challenges posed in our program. But like any good project proves, we had challenges. So here's Jody to tell you more on this. We of course had challenges, but as Marisol said, our team's strengths helped us come up with solutions. So our first challenge was to increase the teacher attendance at the tech trainings. And this was solved by getting our administration on board, supporting us greatly um, and making it a professional development time. So then, COVID-19 hit, as you all know. <laughs> and so this imposed urgent teacher tech needs. So we were right there though. We met them with trainings, with online instruction in Zoom, WhatsApp, Remind, and Google Suite. And our challenges continue. And so then we had the need for updates on COVID-19 from the district and places to find online resources quickly. Um, people would lose everything in their emails. So we turn to our blog and we keep our blog updated now with district news and put in all our resource links um, and the links to OTAN trainings since those just become valuable. And then teachers immediate needs inspired some more. Other teachers stepped up to lead Zoom help sessions and share resources and experiences. We are so proud of this outcome of our project. So we got some um, testimonials and feel free to read them. I just highlight here. Um, 
we helped our teachers gain confidence. We removed barriers to their tech experience and we helped them move into this new online reality. All right, so is this the new normal? I think we're all asking that, right? I'll turn it over to um, Marisol for the conclusion. So we've made significant progress to remake our distance learning program, but we recognize the strides still needed in what may be a new norm in education. And some of these strides include the transition from offering a standalone distance learning program to incorporating distance learning in all ESL classes. And each student will be required to attend an onboarding distance learning orientation at registration. But now more than ever, it's apparent that literacy students' tech needs require more support. And finally, teachers must learn to use an LMS, such as Google, Classroom, Canvas, or Moodle. The DLAC team will recommend to our administration the continuation of ongoing tech training support as a result of this experience. So we had a lot of support along the way and we wanted to take some time to thank um, the people who have supported us through this journey. And um, so we'd like to thank OTAN and Dr. Porter for enlightening us on how to be stronger teacher leaders. We'd like to thank Blair Roy for being our coach and cheerleader. We want to thank Lynn Bartlett for encouraging and supporting us over the last two years. And Angela Rodriguez for always being there for us. So these are the links to our teacher website and our teacher blog. If um, you'd like to take a look, I think these um, slides will be available. Um, and at this point, we will take any questions. Okay, so I don't know if you can see if you're looking at the Q&A, but there's one question from Wilder. We're going to say from Wilder. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Which platforms did you use to create teacher websites and blogs? I uh, used um, Google site and the blogger, Google blogger. Google blogger. Mm -hmm. And then you also used Canvas too, right? Canvas is for distance learning. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yes. we, our teachers are not using that. Oh, yet. okay. Yes. Only, <laughs> yeah, only our DL is on there. Oh, I, I told something I shouldn't have said. Okay. Uh, no, that's Lake. good. Because <laughs> we, because we said in our presentation that they teachers will have to learn to use an LMS. Yeah, they don't know how to yet. <laughs> we won't tell them that if they're listening, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, Maria Elena, do you use Google Classroom accounts for your students? No. No, I we don't. I think Angela should answer that. Yeah. So we do not at this time, but this is an part of our project is, um, as, and as a result of our 100% going distance learning, is that we do recognize that, um, so we have a standalone distance learning program right now. And um, moving forward, we need to blend distance learning into all of our classrooms. And that's gonna require that our teachers use a learning management system. And we are currently um, trying to decide whether we wanna continue with Canvas or use Google Classroom. Um, we have um, pros and cons to both. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So um, not all of our teachers use Google Classroom. Some of them do just kind of on their own, but we are gonna be make, you know, moving more systematic with that. Okay, and one last question. Bev asked, was your administrator on board with increasing te technology at your site? Um, if not, how did you persuade cooperation? We could all say this in unison. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes, and in fact, our administrator was there and part of the, what we had as a distance learning program when we were a department and more close to 30 some odd teachers, uh, which was then reduced in the last couple of years to just the two of us, Lynn on camera and myself 
doing the classes um, <laughs> at a distance. So she and knows exactly where distance learning and these programs are coming from. She's at the heart of why we have been doing this and why we continue to do this. And I will say from an administrator um, perspective or standpoint, um, it is always better to have, um, you know, this is a teacher led group. It is um, teachers, you know, teaching teachers. Um, it's not any sort of mandate. It is something that kind of organically came out of this team. And um, that is, you know, always had our full support. So um, yeah, this is really, they did all of, you know, all of this work, all the work, build rapport with all the teachers. We have a great team. And I think, um, yes, it's, it's always better, I think, for teachers to come and support each other. Thank you, San Juan team. Do we have any other comments from our panel members? San Juan was a leader in distance learning way back when distance learning wasn't a thing yet. And it's, it's heartening to see they continue to take leadership and modified many of the things that they started to really uh, continue to take the lead and, and be more, more even, even more up to date. So way to go, San Juan. Thank you.